Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3, in verses 10 and 11, According to the grace of God which was given me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and other builds upon it, but let each one take heed I builds on it, for no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Brethren, this whole evening has highlighted that truth, especially the sermon this evening. I did have this text chosen before the message. And so the Holy Spirit has orchestrated these things. Yes. Uh, this text was alluded to several times this evening. And so it's just a reminder to us as we conclude our evening, conclude our assemblies on the Lord's Day, morning and evening, with the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Effective preaching and teaching, profitable proclamation, uncovers this reality once again for us. Yeah that no other foundation can be laid than this one which has been laid. No, we have not laid it. In the thinking of men, the current ideas about church growth, you know, they're the ones who lay the foundation. Now, they would not say that in that manner when it comes to this text, of course. I know that they wouldn't. But that's how they're working. That's how they teach. That's how they speak. That's the focus of their efforts is to lay a foundation themselves, not to uncover the foundation. Mm -hmm. I remember not many years ago, uh, someone that a few of us know uh, was attempting to establish a congregation not far from here, and I was in a meeting where they were giving a report about that work that was just beginning, and the floor was open for questions. No one was asking any, so I asked one, what have you been preaching? Well, the man didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. He wasn't preaching. He was suggesting. Mm -hmm. He was counseling. He was alluding to certain things that were helpful for people. As a result, this work has collapsed now. After hours and hours and tens of thousands of dollars invested, yeah. the work has collapsed because the realities of what God has done in Christ Jesus had not been uncovered and proclaimed and declared for the people to hear and then for the work to be done by God's Spirit in Christ Jesus. For the living stones to be built upon that foundation. Those living stones being the believers. Well, the work that we've done this day is the building upon that foundation. Yes. The builders have been careful. Mm -hmm. They've been careful because they don't want the work to be burned up in the end. None of us want that. Mm -hmm. So we have been careful. I preached twice today for about an hour and 50 minutes, something like that. I was glad in the place where I was this morning that the clock, or the, that the agenda was clear and I could take the rest of the morning. And so I did right up to the last minute declaring these things uh, from Romans about the obedience of faith. And the people listened well. Uh, seemed to anyway. And many, many came to me and were glad to hear the things that were spoken Amen. and noted that, they were, uh, uh, that they, were, they were good things. They were challenging things. They were, they were a, a strong provocation for them. It seemed that that's what they were saying. I hope they continue to receive that. So let me remind you again then, brethren, about this foundation. Here's the view of it. You're familiar with it. Here's the full view of it from Revelation chapter 5. I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. This is the foundation from heaven's perspective. The lamb standing as if slain established, not by men, not by men, declared by men, those whom uh, God has raised up and made apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, then they declare this reality, see, mm -hmm. especially, especially when we come to this table. Yeah. 
we are declaring this reality. We're rejoicing in this reality. We're, we're uh, once again stating, declaring, reporting, if you will, our confidence in this reality. Yes. We are confident in what God has done. We were rejoicing in it. We're giving thanks in it. Hence the term that's used by some others, Eucharist. Giving thanks for what God has done. The good work of which we are partakers. And we have joined ourselves to these things then. To partake of them fully. To continue to eat and drink at the table that the Lord has set for us. All things are ready, come to the feast. And so we do. Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name.